my life set is very much based upon how a DJ would play. The immediacy, the way the transitioning goes, it's a standard. And that standard is something that I would like to incorporate on my dollar set. Most sets that I've seen, they sometimes seem to noodle off into oblivion, which is cool if the crowd comes for that kind of vibe, but most often people want stuff to happen pretty fast. Transitioning like a DJ can benefit you in your life set. Now how that works is something I'm going to show you today. Buckle up. That's today's video. Are you ready? Let's go do it right now. Hey, what's up, I'm in Little Kitchen, and thank you for checking out yet another video. Now, if this is your first time here, do not hesitate to click subscribe and hit the notification bell. Whenever I upload a new video, you'll be kept in the loop and you'll not miss out on anything. Now, stick around till the end of this video, because I'll tell you all about Discord and Patreon, the connection, about how you can create some music with me, how you can send in your demos, and that kind of good stuff. Now. This thing didn't come from my brain exactly. I have to say that years ago when I started this dollars setup, when I was contemplating on how should I play live, I fell into the trap that most people fall into. A dollars rig of some sorts is very much step program oriented or loop driven oriented. So it means that you're making a loop and you're grooving into that loop and it's really cool. But then you have to transition. And I know that I struggled with that in the beginning. How do I transition from one pattern to the next, from one song into the next? A thing that Kink told me, he said, Lucien, the fact your life set works is because you approach it from a DJ point of view, from a DJ standpoint. DJs transition in a different way. Now, if you would like to incorporate the gear you're buying and the gear you're using, a technique like the DJ transition can help you even determine what kind of gear you would want to use, how you would like connect it, and how you would program the things over your different uh, band members in order for them to just do tasks so it's easier for you to transition from one place to the next. Now, I will show you a few DJ transitions for those of you dollars acts that don't have any DJ experience. I'll show you how a DJ transition works by means of a few old school uh, principles that have been yeah, there like forever. And it might be helpful to you. Let me know in the comment section below how you do that, how you transition, because there's a gazillion ways to roam. And my way is not the be all and end all, but it's just a way of showing you on how I transition. And uh, it seems to work for me. People love the fact that it works. I have migrated from a philosophy that I have had to a newer form of working it. So that's what I'm going to show you today. Buckle up, fasten your seatbelt, and let's go do that. You ready? Let's go. Back before any of this digital world kind of vibe was happening, this was the first ever DJing that commenced. One record, one record. Now, some DJs just opened the fader up and placed the other record in there, but later on, people started to DJ mix. To mix the record in. You can see this slot over on this side and over this side. This is what's setting the tempo. Within a bracket, obviously, but it will go faster and slower so you can align the two records together because most often with this hole never being in the middle and obviously DJs choosing different uh, speeds on which to produce those records are never the same BPM as you can see that this is slightly off with this this means that if this is lower this is low this is faster this record would be faster than this record so I need to adjust the tempo let's play it first <laughs> Cool, that's a cool track. But once it's placed, I cannot make any loops of some sort. I need to just let it play. So the decision on what record to go to play next is also very important. So what I'm going to do is going to cue this record up, which means I'm going to look for the first beat. Cool. I've got my kick drum sitting right here, so when I launch it, I can launch the record. Um, and then it will hopefully go well. Let's see if I can uh, still do this. I'm just gonna wait, I'm not gonna wait till the end. I'm gonna go straight in. Lucky for me, it's the same key. I didn't plan on it, but that helps out.
And as you can see, I'm taking out low end here. For, it's a blend. And the blending and the tricks on how this works is exactly how we're going to do it. Cue here with the voice. Switch. Slowly taking out this one. This is still playing, mind you. And the levels on of which I mix this is exactly what you need to focus on. You can hear there's another sound that came in. Ding -a -ding -a -ding -a -ding -a -ding. Now I'm going to take this out. That would be a perfect vinyl transition. I've got a loop over on my left player. And I've got a loop over on my right player. Let's look more closely to these loops, shall we? In this loop, you can clearly hear that there's more of a musical thing happening. So the drive is coming from the um, call and response. There's a, there's a sound. As you can hear that sound. And then there's an arpeggio. So that's keeping the, the groove going. And of course the bass line. So that's the drive over on this side. On the other side, this loop, it's got more of a percussion driven um, uh, thing. So call and response again. So towards the end of the groove, there's this conga that constantly plays. And when it goes into the initial track, because this is all being mixed, you ideally wouldn't hear this in the club, then this bass line will start, like so. So what you would want is when this bass line starts, something needs to be taken out here. That's how it works transition-wise on a conventional DJ mix. Let's do that, shall we? So I'm going to play this loop and I'm going to mix this loop into it. I'm, the EQ is all flat and I'm staying well out of the orange um, lines right here. So I'm going to mix it in, take out the loop. I'm just going to leave it running. So you can hit with the bump, 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 bump. So there's a call and response between the two records already going. This is very important to take into consideration. Now I'm going to switch the low ends on both records, like so. I'm going to lower this record because this is the one that's going to start growing. So I need to take stuff out. So, do that on the mid range, lower all that kind of stuff. The EQ section, this is something in a doorless world you need to figure out beforehand. This is where you select your sounds to do this exactly without you having to turn any knobs. Clearly, this record is not starting. We would never bring this record back in, right? 
because now we're just gonna build it out and build this track up. This track is just gonna grow like so, and so on and so forth. Now, obviously, with a dollar setup, there is much more going on. But at the same time, you can simplify it by looking at that exact same thing. Now, I have got a pattern that I look upon as the way I would play records, like I just showed you. So this is a complete set of drums and bass. And the thing that I don't really like about playing records, or it's just, that's just the way it is, is the fact that whenever you want to add or subtract stuff, that's just basically what, what happens. What's on the record is on the record. What's on the two track, what's on the file is on the file. So um, I call this three dimensional mixing also because you've got much more ingredients that you can do. Now to simplify it, this thing needs to go into a different pattern, um, but I have got one row of four uh, sequences, four squares, four patterns, if you will, to make up one track, one song, and this corresponds if this is um, uh, the second uh, track, if this is bank one, one, two, three, four, the four tracks on one page, it means that my banks correspond with that. So you can see I've got 12 banks here, which means we're on bank two right now, and that corresponds with this track. So the transitioning that needs to go like, this needs to go to another song in a second, and then this needs to go to another song in a second. And I used to do it like sending a program change from this to this. There is a trick on which you can get this thing to switch instantly, um, which is a video I will probably link uh, down in the description, because usually um, you can tell any sequence here to send the program change to the octa track. If the octa track would not necessarily switch in time, it will take a while. If this thing is set on four bars, which you can see right here, three, four, it would then now switch, but you want it to switch instantly. That was a trick that I've done with a reset and a start stop command that you have to send from the uh, APC to the octa track. Now I've strayed away from that because I want to do it in a different way. I want to be more live. So pretty much what I need to do is, you can debate like with drums, there's no information there. I've got information, musical information usually sitting on track number seven for the tracks that I use. So if this was to switch to a different song and this didn't switch, that would be a clash. Now to transition into a different track, in this sense would mean I'll build up my track like so. I've got all these different elements already playing. But as you can see on the mixer, I have turned them off. So this mini tower sitting right here is on this fader. And what you can hear is the bass note is already coming from the MPC. So if, if there's something's wrong or I get in and I'm not ready, I'm not yet set to start performing or I'm still feeling out the room or whatever, um, I'll probably just leave this running. I've got the Tantan black box here connected to this MIDI fighter with a crash and an impact, which also does a trick. So if I look at the end of my bar, three, four, I want to crash right here. I'll play it. There you go. Now open this up. And then it go for 16 bars and then just builds back up. So now I've got another sort of like structure bearing because this also is loop driven, but still there's a crash here or some reverse. So now instantly that starts to um, um, metabolize some sort of a pattern here. So towards the end, you get an upriser here that goes into. Now this is giving me um, my bearings within the groove where I am. So it doesn't matter whether this is four bars long, eight bars long, or whatever. I'm following the black boxes routine. So I know I've got some time before I need to switch to a different thing. I have got another baseline. So I'm looking at, okay, how can I progress? So the next thing to do to feel like a transition is to add more stuff that I've got right here. There's an arpeggio playing already on the XD that's muted. And then there's some sort of a thing playing on the um, subsequent 37 that's already playing that's also muted. So I've got a lot of control right here. My drums coming from the octa track, I can turn them off and just keep it like this. Or say like turn them on again. So click out, click in. That's how I do it. So I'm waiting for my Turn around on the black box XT, no, sorry, on the black box, and then I'm going to add another baseline. Now, 
the transition means I'm not going to add something new, I'm going to add something similar. And what I've done is I've got some sort of a um, modulated bass note already playing, that's very in your face as you can hear, but what I can do is turn it down a little bit. See? So I have automated the filter cutoff on the MPC, but not the envelope generation amount. So if I open this up, it becomes a little bit more in your face. So now I've got another trick to help my transition go. So if I want to have a little bit more impact, I'll take out the kick. Two, three, four, open this up. There we go. Whoop, whoop. So more intensity is already starting and I still didn't switch, right? Still didn't switch. There is something sitting over here on the FPC, but on the Acid Box 3, the Acid Box 3 is also connected. Let's go to the different pattern. If I want to make some more music, there's more music coming from a different a sequence. Hang on, one more thing. Okay, go. I can do it here also. And the... Which is going to play from the second um, sequence. On the front part, if you automate something on the mini tower, mind you, you overrule this filter knob. I have to tell you that. You will overrule the filter knob, but it's cool to go in like so to the ends of the bar. And then it, whoop, and it just jumps back to doing that automation. So that's a nice trick that you can use in order to have another life thing. If I want to do a little bit more of an improv, I've got a crash sitting right here. I've got a clap sitting right here. With a delay, so I can also get a little bit of a funky vibe going. Okay, lowering the filter because output 3 and 4 on the Akai are going into the asset box, going back into the NPC, and then some big starts playing right here. Break down. This is another transition. Makes a big impact. Nothing is really, really happening. I'm just adding an arpeggio. I will lower the, uh, the subsequent a little bit. Nice. Open up track number three, which is snare drum. Drum roll. I can see my turnaround is coming in. One, two, three, and so cool. So I'm in business, right? I can wheel the filter over here. So this thing on the uh, subsequent is also playing. So it's a three bass line. Wow, 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 wow! Another bass line, nice. So I've got ample room to just do different things. Breakdown. So vocal here, I'll take all my drums out and go through this and here. Vocal chops that are playing here, if you follow this channel you must have heard this track before, but um, I'll leave something running so I can dance to it if I want to or take it out. But usually I'll go in with the high like and the trick is I can go forward which invokes more music, meaning the last pattern here. What I'll do is I'll hit this pattern arm the drums and say let's go back in one two three and nice so and that's how i can just like now build in breaks where there are, aren't any um because if i i don't necessarily have to take out the drums per se so that means that okay if i'm going to this drop that i just had with the vocal I can do the same thing again to sweep them out and I'm like, oh wow, that sounded cool. Let's go there. I can arm it. It's blinking, which means it's going there. Five, six, seven, eight. See, and now my drums, I keep, keep it pumping. This could be an outro of some sort if there's no music playing. Um, but let's say I would like to advance into more music going in like. So 
So, this is a completely different thing. Obviously, I'm not going to do this abruptly and I get my levels to sort that out a little bit better, obviously, but you can uh, understand that, okay, now I'm there. So, this is the climax of the track, where this used to be the end pattern of the track, this is now the climax of the track. So, okay, nice, one, two, three, back it. Nice, the path coming from the uh, XD. You see how all my levels are on? Now, when it's blinking, it's okay. If it's illuminated, it's not okay. So, I don't mind an analog that's to blink a little bit. It means it's working hard to um, keep stuff in check. But it's cool, you know, a little bit of saturation is not bad. So, take out the kick, go back to the second uh, sequence, go in like that. Nice. Now I will go back to the first pattern and do the transition into another song, right? Which means I will have to take stuff out or fill stuff down. So we'll have to make sure that you're not on different pages because if I'm going to start playing around with the filter here, it's going to affect the subsequent as well. Let's go back to the first sequence, like so. Bam. Ostinato. Back on the same root note. Keep it very proggy, very... Now, I know on track 7 mostly is my music uh, on the octave track. Because if this breaks down or it stalls or it hangs, sometimes it will hang. I, had it. I don't know what it is, but you know with certain things, the software can give up on you. Always happens when you perform. So I'm going to take out track 7 now already. Bam. Which means... I will now prepare the transition into the different track in a different track. Now I will arm bank three one, which means it's going to go to bank C, and I'll take out the kick. One, two, three, and now you can hear a different clap. That tells me we've already switched in the background. Okay. Now I'm going to take out this bass line. Usually you can just go in, arm this, go to your next sequence page, arm your kick, one, two, three, four, one, two, seven, also. And we're in the next sound song. And because I've already lowered certain things, things are not playing. But the first pattern is my intro pattern, where with records I have to just mask them over each other. You know, like I just told you with the transitioning, what I do here is I'll stick on the same tempo. I will not increase or decrease. I'm on 125 BPM. And then I can easily think like, okay, where do I want to go from here? Because if the tempo doesn't change drastically, people just, just keep dancing. And I've got another thing that... I told you the musical information was on seven. So I'm going to take this out again. Simple. And then I can debate, like, you know what, I'm going to take out uh, the drums of the octopus, except the kick. Boom. Instantly, we're in the next song. By now, people understand, whoa, okay, we're in this next song, yeah, cool. Cool. Let's lower down the effects here, boom. Play around. Bam, 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 bam. Ooh, I'm so alive, cool. Okay, take the kick out, go back in with the drums, and then you start to build your song. See, it's always on that turnaround. So I'm not changing stuff here. I've got big risers sitting here, but we need to make the bigger impact. But this is a C category vibe, so it doesn't necessarily, I don't think you notice it if I would change it, you know, if it's not that dominant. So I'll just keep this going. I've got a right symbol here that I would not like to use in the beginning of the track. Uh, but the basic proggy stuff, prog house stuff, add a sample, an old sample to it. See, and this is how you just migrate. And if you get your bearings a little bit, it goes smoother and smoother and better and better. And then you can just easily say, okay, wow. 
you know? It doesn't always work the same because sometimes I will enter with this sound and take this out. Sometimes I'll just start with this and then enter the sound in like so. Or sometimes I'll start with this sound uh, or I'll just take all the drums out and just go in just like, you know? This is festival stuff right here. Okay, now let's move on to the next pattern, like so. SMI going, and then you can just migrate into different parts again. That's not wait, let's just do it straight. Take out all the drums because we're going to make a drop right here. Nice. So, big Ento type break, you know, very French um, melodic house kind of chords. And then I can opt to go to the last pattern where it's another big impact sound, or I can just go back to the same thing. Bam, two, that. And this I can just keep doing for a long time. So these are transitions that I think that work. Make sure that this is the intro here. The second row of things is where the full impact is. So think of the full body track with everything in it. This could be the breakdown. Again, let's do that thing again to the next pattern. As you can see this pattern is longer, five, six, so it's eight bars. Now if I don't take out my drums, I get this. how I would transition. Again, if I'm thinking I need to go to a different track, I can also say like, you know what, let's take seven out and make some sort of a drop. And I can filter this down. Bum, 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 bum. And the acid also. Take the right out. Cool. Next, bank in. So now switch to another bank. Go in. Let's try two, three, go. And bam, you're in the next track. You see? And you just have to look at the crowd to see when it's possible to do so. Um, but it helps to have got your big themes that are not like, the, the driving theme's not like the theme that's going to um, do the big drop, but everything that is helping your track for, as arpeggios obviously, you stick them on separate filters. I can map this away on my launch control Excel. This is what we're hearing right now. But I tend to just like have it on my right hand. I'm right-handed by the way. So I can always be here. Take out the drums with left and got different things. So you have to play it like an instrument. And the more you get, going and the more you get comfortable the more you'll find that this transitioning is exactly where you want to go right I got the kick open this up drum roll one two three four next to the bass line transitioning and now I'll just do it in 20 minutes obviously but when you're playing this live you just take your time to really really space out where you want to go how you want to just do it and I've got the musical set going if I was to do a ravey set of some sort then obviously it would work differently uh, then the stops would be more uh, hard stop hard drop Boom, big impact because the tempo will be faster, it will be 10 BPMs higher than where I am now, it's 135. But for now, for this melodic house kind of vibe, this is where I'd love to go. But this could be a theme, but I've layered all my sounds in a way that if I take stuff out, something else is going to take over. Let's do that bass line and we're going to take the arc out. Try 
transitions that's how i do it let me know in the comment section how you do it if you've got a different way of going from one place to the next there's so many different ways so it will be cool to talk about it now if you made it this far into the video you sir or lady are an absolute superstar i do mean that thank you for being here if you want to get closer to yours truly you want to just be part of a very vastly growing community i would invite you to go check out patreon.com slash analog kitchen did I get it right in one go? Yes, I did. Because I've got the bridge connected to Discord and on Discord is where we talk shop. We, meaning the community. There's a lot of cool patrons out there that are willing to help you if you struggle with transitioning, if you struggle with getting your stuff from A to B, if you struggle with getting stuff in a flight case, how to connect it, how to make tracks. You can send in your demos. People will feedback on it very respectfully and I'm happy that that place exists. You will not be breaking the bank. It's a cool place, a cool community of like-minded dolls, synth nerds like myself. So do come and check it out. Now, thank you for watching. Keep watching this space on more information. And I'll be here next week with another video. I'm in a location and I'm out. <laughs>